Importing audio files into Adobe Audition CS6 is super easy. There's no special conversion required. You don't need to re-encode or re-wrap or adjust the metadata. Audition has a very, very broad range of supported file formats, and one way or another, you're probably going to be able to work with whatever you have. The simplest way is probably to just double-click inside this Files panel. Just double-click on the background area, and this is going to bring up the Import or Open File panel. And uh, if I go in, maybe I'll just pick um, a music clip. Here we go. So this Departure from Cairo track. I'm going to select it. I could lasso multiple clips. I could filter down the type of audio that I'm going to see. These are all the supported file types. You can see it's just a massive list. And I could put in a particular file name, but I'm going to click Open. And there you go. I've now got the file imported and ready to work with. You'll also notice that at the top left of the Files panel, I've got an Open File option and an Import File option, and the difference is pretty subtle. If I choose Import File, and maybe I'll choose this other music track, Music Sonomo Stereo Mix, and click Open, you'll notice that I still have the Departure from Cairo file open here in the Waveform Editor. If instead I click on the Open File option, and let me browse to a different item here, Let's take, uh, here we go, this um, Give Me A Try guitar track. I'll click Open on that. Now you'll notice I'm looking at the track, and that really is the only difference. When I first started learning to use Audition, it took me a while to fathom the difference between these two buttons, but that's it. If you're in the middle of working on something and you want to add some clips to the Files panel, but don't want to stop seeing the file that you're already working on, then you would choose import rather than open. And just for the record, in case you're not familiar with working with these kinds of applications, when you import something into Adobe Audition, nothing is actually copied. Nothing's moved anywhere, nothing's duplicated. Audition just creates a link, and if you like, each item here in the Files panel is a link to an original media file on your hard drive. If I right-click or control-click on this item, if I'm on a Mac, and choose Reveal in Explorer, up's going to come a window, I'll just pull this on screen here, and you can see, here it is, here is the MP3 file itself that I'm working with in the Files panel. Now I mention this because when you import items to Adobe Audition, it's, uh, it's relevant where the file is. Don't, for example, have an external USB drive plugged in, import a bunch of files, and then unplug the drive. Those files will all just disappear and be unavailable. You'll have the links inside of Audition, but you won't have access to the actual media. So always copy onto a local drive before you continue. I can, of course, also import by dragging and dropping. Let's get this, um, give me a try, drum snare, and drop that straight in. You see I've got the copy icon there, and there you go, I've imported. That's the equivalent to me double-clicking or clicking on the Import button. I'd say about 70 or 80% of the time, that's how I import things into Audition. But there is also a dedicated media browser, and the media browser is there to help you locate content on the hard drive, and in particular, it makes it easy because it can preview things. So here, for example, I'm looking at the Assets folder, and you should have these items as well. If I look inside the Loops directory, you can see I've got a drum loop there, and if I click Play, I get a preview. In fact, I can turn on, if I go to, uh, maybe uh, maybe I'll go to a different directory here. Yeah, let's choose these. If I turn on this autoplay option, and you'll notice I've got exactly the same options here at the bottom of the files panel. Now, anytime I click on anything, I get a preview. And I can turn on loop play, which will just loop and loop and loop, which is useful if you've got, for example, a short loop. Okay, you get the idea. So it's just going to go around and around and again. So this is very useful for locating content on your hard drive if you're not actually sure what you want. Another nice feature of Adobe Audition CS6, which is new in this version, is the support for multiple, I suppose what you'd call broadcast formats, things like XD cam cameras or P2 cameras. And these cameras divide their contents into multiple folders. Here you can see we've got the contents of a P2 card. This would come from a Panasonic camera. And we've got video in one place and audio in another and so on. Now, I suppose the expected workflow is that you would have this media inside of 
Adobe Premiere Pro. And there's a really convenient send to option directly from Premiere Pro to Adobe Audition. Makes life really simple. But if you're not using that, if you just want to take some audio from a P2 card, well, here it is. If I double click here, see on the left here, I've got my browser for my different folders. And on the right, I see the contents of the folder I've selected. And I've, I've gone into the audio part of this P2 card. You can see I've got some .mxf files. Now this, this is a file type that historically Audition would not have been able to play back. In fact, if I drag this into my files panel to import it, you'll notice that yep, we get an error message. But this is an error message that tells you what's going on. And this is a feature that you'll see popping up all over Adobe Audition and all over all Adobe applications. Adobe do a really good job of explaining what's going on in the moment. And here we can see we're unable to open this file. I uh, can't use any of the available importers. If you want to try using the dynamic link media server, go to preferences and turn it on. So let's do that. I'm going to go to edit and preferences and media and disk cache. This would be under the Adobe Audition menu on Mac OS. And under these settings, I've got dynamic link media enabled dynamic link media server format support. I'm going to turn that on. And I'm going to leave off the preview option for just a second. I'll click OK. Now, if I drag and drop this into my project, you see no problem at all. I can double click and open this up. And there is the audio ready for me to work on it. No problem. What's happening here is a audition is making use of the same media core technology that Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects use for playback, and even, I think, uh, Adobe Encore as well. These applications are using a core bit of software running in the background on the computer. And although it can sometimes slow down access because it's got to load up that application before it can be used, it will give you access to additional formats. Notice, though, that in the media browser, I still don't have a play button. And this is an interesting little distinction. If I go back into my preferences, notice the keyboard shortcut here is Control-Shift-K. That would be Command-Shift-K on a Mac, so I'm going to use that shortcut. That's going to take me to the general preferences. I've got the types of preference on the left. Let's go to media and disk cache. And I'm going to turn on enable DLMS preview in the media browser. I get a warning that it might be slower. Now, lo and behold, I've got a play button. And this is pretty noisy. But it means I can preview this format. So that's multiple ways to import media into Adobe Audition, ready to start work with it.